I, I won't sort of, um, I'll, I'll push on because what, what I'm trying to get across here is our personal experience at Dublin Airport. Some has been good, some not so good, okay? But as we go on, it, it, it does get better. Um, in the sense that you, sometimes when you, at the, um, when you um, start these programmes, you often wonder, are you on your own? Or who's actually supporting you? Uh, in relation to ourselves, just from the point of view of funding, uh, we don't have a lot of money to throw at it. Um, the Commission for Aviation Regulation, or the, who's been known as the Aviation Regulator, they wouldn't give us any money at all for uh, PAD schemes, any like that programmes. Um, so we had to find the money elsewhere. And that's quite hard these days. But uh, as, as we're... As we uh, go on and we show the benefits, they're nearly embarrassed into providing money towards it. Um, so from that point of view, what I'm trying to get across is that hard work, it's worth it in the end, so never ever give up. You might feel that you're working on your own to some degree, but you will get there, folks. And I must say, the previous three speakers, it's just fantastic to sit there and um, look at their personal experience. And I say, well, well done to each and every one of you. Okay, I'll push on anyway, folks. Um, Um, this was a headline in the uh, national newspapers, man dies at Dublin Airport due to lack of defibrillator. The only part of this was that we had to train people in place uh, with regard to administer CPR and such like, and um, ambulance people at the time, ambulance service at the time, but this was so far back that uh, defibrillators were really only coming onto the market and really weren't in workplaces and uh, public institutions. So um, from the DA's perspective, it's not a very nice headline, and uh, we're very media shy in that regard. And, uh, but having said that, we did take cognizance of it, and uh, we moved on. And if you look at uh, the start of the programme, and by the way, there are people out there who know me better than myself in the audience today, so they can testify to these stats that I'm going to produce in front of you. The programme started in 2002. It started with three AEDs, okay? And the three ADs we had to find from our own budget, so there was something suffered that year. But as I say, we felt, we felt that to put three ADs in place was absolutely paramount, that we, we had to do it. Now we have 43 AEDs in place between two terminals. Now, that doesn't include outbuildings, um, other organisations within the airport, but what we'll do is we will provide uh, backup to them in the, in, the, in the form of advice on how to go about the programme. We've 18 in Terminal 1 and 23 in Terminal 2, and they're all fairly conspicuous. So, I mean, if you're, if you're passing through and somebody has, has an event, uh, by all means, you should, should have an idea where they are because they're really on all the, the um, they're well, well marked at this stage. Uh, we've two mobile in the ambulance and on our domestic fire appliance. Uh, we have actually have more as well. Um, the one thing I would say to you is that even when our ambulance is actually um, tied up on a call, we will send out a domestic response. We will always send a paramedic to the scene even when our ambulance has been dispatched to hospital or whatever like that. So, um, six airport fire service instructors um, and all airport police fire service officers trained. The minimum uh, standard would be CFR, EFR, and um, we also have a number of paramedics now. We're actually are, we have another group of paramedics in training the Dublin Fire Brigade at the moment, so we will, we will double our number of paramedics now over the course of the next couple of years. Um, just to give you an idea of the number of people passing through, um, 2002, 15.1, that's the, when we started the programme. Um, and you can see there, progressively through the good years, the numbers increased, and we hit a total of 23 million passengers. Now, bear in mind the population of Ireland, and we deal with that number of people in a 12-month period. So you can imagine that uh, the amount of events we have would be quite high. And the airport is, is quite a trying place, you know, if you pass through it. It's, sometimes it's not the easiest, it hasn't got any easier. Despite, as you say, we try to make, help you on your way, we do our best. But uh, people, uh, particularly elderly people, people with problems, can, uh, can bring the onset on a little quicker. Um, the p passenger numbers dropped off there during the bad years, but they're actually increasing again. And this year we would expect to reach 21 million. Okay? Now, the significance of that is that if you look at the number of people passing through, we, we reckon that for every one passenger, two, two meters and greeters. So you can, you, can, you can triple that number to 60 million people passing through the airport on an annual basis. 
and also on a daily basis we have 13,000 staff. I would argue that's actually higher, but that's, that's what they tell me um, officially, that's what we have. Okay, in relation to uh, the airport, airport police fire service, um, we have a police service, we have a fire service. Now they used to be all in the one, but they've now separated. Okay, they've gone their own ways. And within the fire service, we have a dedicated ambulance service. Now, they are trained firefighters, but their, their first priority would be firefighting, obviously, but um, as I say, they are trained to paramedic level. Um, and all, we have 120 people uh, trained in either CFR or EFR. Okay, now what it doesn't say in there is that uh, we also have a small number of EMTs as well who are graduating up to the level of paramedic. Okay, this is just a uh, case history uh, back to January 2002. Uh, a male patient uh, presented with cardiac arrest at security checkpoint. Obviously, one of the most frequent areas for, for cardiac arrests. Time of call, 9.36. CPR are in progress from security staff. Um, we, as part of your induction program in Dublin Airport, you will be taught um, the very minimum of how to carry out CPR. And uh, that has actually progressed on now to uh, CFR in a lot of cases. Uh, defib was requested, ambulance on C939, uh, shock advised by defib, patient transported to Bowman Hospital, and patient flew home one week later. Okay. By the way, any statistics I gave you here can be verified by some people in the audience because every time we have an arrest, the defibrillator is independently uh, monitored or assessed to make sure that whether it was a save or it wasn't, or something was done right or wasn't done right. So we are very critical ourselves and uh, as I say, we were, we're there to learn as well. It's a learning process. Okay, how we class the save? A uh, patient presents with a shockable rhythm. Uh, shock or shocks are uh, delivered. Return of, sp uh, return of spontaneous circulation prior to drug, drug intervention. So that's what we deem a save. To date, we've had 23 saves. Do this does, does not mean that 23 people walked out of hospital following a cardiac arrest at Dublin Airport. Uh, so we have 23 saves versus 22 non-saves, average of 50%. Now having said that, I've met a lot of the 23 people who have walked out because they, they tend to come back and say thank you, that type of thing, which, which, which is great and it's, it's great to see the people. Um, so as I say, we can, uh, we can verify those statistics if anybody doubts them. Uh, the chain of survival, and this is what it's all about folks, okay? And you can associate with this. Everyone in this room can associate with this. Early access, trained personnel in all passenger areas. Okay. Uh, early CPR is above, early defibrillation, key placement of AEDs. Now, the significant part, thing, what we've done, I've, I've walked the legs off myself back in 2002 till 2003. Any patient that has an event is not more than one minute away from, from a defibrillator. That's the maximum you can be away. We have walked, we have walked it, walked it, walked it. So we walked the course we know, and uh, we still review that, because things do change, so you have to, you have to move along with the times. Uh, early advanced medical care, our own ambulance on site, Bowman Hospital, seven minutes away. Now, having said that, um, we have a direct lines to the Dublin Fire Brigade on the health board, so if we're not available, they will be on the scene fairly quickly as well. Um, PAD scheme at Dublin Airport, training and revalidation ongoing, Light Pack 15 on our ambulance, training other frontline departments, and we also have incorporated a critical incident stress debriefing. This is very, very important for people who have, who have actually had to deal with an event. It really is, and it's something really that we're only taking cognizance of now, even, even ourselves. Update our Light Pack 500s, we're hoping to update them shortly. Uh, again, it's all down to funding. Um, and the AED is now placed in, into work areas. One thing I would say about placement of AED is that if you're going to place them into an area, you must have, somebody must have control over them, somebody must be responsible. They need to be checked, they must be ready for immediate use, accessible, and checked. I would recommend a weekly check regardless where they are. Okay. Okay, and that's our experience at Dublin Airport. Thank you very much.